The derivative is a very useful tool in calculus, as it tells us the rate of change. But what if we took the derivative of the derivative? No, you're not going crazy. That's called the second derivative, and there's actually really good reasons for doing that. In this video, I'm going to break down the second derivative for you in three main ideas. We're going to define the second derivative, visualize the second derivative, and apply the second derivative. So let's get right into it. Step one, what does the second derivative mean? The second derivative sounds complicated, but it's not. The derivative is a rate of change. So the derivative of a derivative is the rate at which the rate of change is changing. If the derivative tells us how fast the function is moving, then the second derivative is how the function's movement is changing. Imagine driving. If the first derivative tells you your current speed, the second derivative tells you the acceleration, or how fast your speed is changing. Now, before we get into an example, let's talk about notation. The notations for the second derivative are pretty straightforward. From what we have here, if we combine the double derivative symbols, we get the Leibniz notation. This here can be read as the second derivative of y with respect to x. Another common notation is the Lagrange notation. It's like the derivative, but with an extra apostrophe. Both of these mean the same thing, the second derivative, or the rate at which the rate of change is changing. Hmm, maybe a bit confusing still, so let's clear that up in step two. Step two, what does the second derivative actually show us? The second derivative controls the curvature, or concavity, of a graph. A positive second derivative tells us that the graph bends upward, because that means the derivative, or the slope, is increasing. We call this graph concave up, or that it has a positive concavity. On the other hand, if the second derivative is negative, the graph bends downward. As you might have guessed, we say that this function is concave down, or that it has a negative concavity. And this shows us that the slope is actively decreasing. Now, concavity can be hard to find, so let me show you a trick. When you're looking for a concavity, place an arrow facing to the right somewhere on the curve. If you're able to somehow make the arrow point up, the curve must be concave up. If the arrow head points down, then it must be concave down. Now, let's look at concavity in an example. Given the function x squared plus x, we know that the derivative is 2x plus 1. To find the second derivative, we just take the derivative of the derivative. The derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So the second derivative of x squared plus x is 2. Now, 2 is greater than 0. The second derivative is positive, so we know that the function must be concave up. And indeed, we see that our function represents a parabola. Now, a positive second derivative means concave up, and a negative second derivative means concave down. When the second derivative equals 0, we run into what we call an inflection point, or where the function switches concavity. Inflection points behave a lot like critical points with first derivatives. Uh, we'll touch on this in greater depth in a future video. Okay, so we've looked at how the second derivative can explain some of the behaviors of a function to us, but how is this useful? Time for step three. Let's apply the second derivative. The second derivative has a wide variety of uses. One use is confirming extrema. In previous videos, I've shown you how to find extrema by using the candidates test and then testing the intervals, but there is a way faster and way easier way to do this. You guessed it, second derivatives. After finding critical points using the first derivative, and of course assuming that the critical points exist on the function, we can determine whether they are maxima or minima using the second derivative. If the second derivative is positive at the critical point, we know that at that point, the function is concave up, and the derivative, or the rate of change, is becoming more positive. So this tells us that the function values before the point and the function values after the point must be greater. Ah, we call that a minimum. On the other hand, if the second derivative is negative where the first derivative is zero or undefined, we know that the function there must be concave down. Since the rate of the function is becoming more and more negative, that means at that critical point, we hit a peak, which we call a maximum. How cool is that? At first, the second derivative may seem super extra and unimportant, but it's actually super useful to know as it tells us so much about a function's behavior. That's an introduction to the second derivative. If you found this video or this channel helpful in any way, be sure to head over to my store, 
And also, the first 20 people to use the code in the description get 20% off all items in the store. So be sure to head over there and support the channel. And now, keep working hard and keep learning. And subscribe.